Halley's Comet has been a source of interest and fascination for centuries. Its most famous representation is maybe the Bethlehem Comet, painted by Giotto di Bondoni in 1304. Once every 76 years, this mysterious object returns from the far corners of our solar system for a brief rendezvous with the Sun and spectators here on Earth. The last time was exactly 20 years ago, in 1986. Two, one, stop. Ignition. Ariane first stage ignition and take off. Take off, then... Décollage. First stage flight. Début des manoeuvres de roulis. Only months before, ESA launched its first deep space mission, Giotto, on a mission to this comet. The encounter took place in the night of the 13th to the 14th of March 1986, three minutes after midnight, exactly as planned. Coming as close as 600 kilometers to take images of the comet's nucleus and prove that comets have a solid heart. A milestone mission. Giotto was part of an ambitious international effort, including probes from Japan and the Soviet Union to solve the mysteries surrounding Comet Halley. One of the main challenges for ESA scientists was to develop a spacecraft able to survive the approach of the comet long enough to get close to its nucleus. The spacecraft and the comet were heading towards each other at a combined speed of 245,000 kilometers per hour. At this speed, a cometary dust particle penetrates eight centimeters of solid aluminum. So the engineers had to develop a protective shield, light enough for a space vehicle, but resistant enough to block these particles moving 50 times faster than a bullet. And they succeeded. On the 12th of March, 1986, the spacecraft's instruments first detected hydrogen ions. 24 hours later, Giotto started its dangerous passage through dense cometary dust. The color camera sent images back to Earth that showed an elongated potato shape of 15 kilometers long and nine kilometers across. Other instruments provided data on the composition of Halley's molecular and chemical structure. At the operation center ESOC in Darmstadt, everybody was excited as the stream of pictures came in. And then, seconds before closest approach, the spinning spacecraft began to wobble after an impact with a dust particle of just a tenth of a gram. Contact with the Earth was lost. For a moment, everybody feared the worst. But to everyone's amazement, occasional bursts of information began to come through, and 32 minutes later, continuous contact was established. The adventure continued. About half of the instruments had suffered damage. ESA decided to put Giotto into hibernation, ready for another mission. This second rendezvous was with comet Greek Skelyarop, of a quite different type. On the 9th of July, 1992, a command brought Giotto back to life. A few days later, at about 215 million kilometers from Earth, Giotto made the closest cometary flyby ever in space science history, less than 200 kilometers. Today, exactly 20 years after the Giotto encounter with Halley's Comet, it's obvious that Giotto opened a new era of European space exploration. Huygens, Mars and Venus Express are symbols of this new era, which sees Europe on an equal footing with the United States planetary missions. And there is more to come. Rosetta, for example, started a long journey to Comet Churyumov-Gerasimenko in February 2004. This time, there is no question of short flybys anymore. Rosetta will arrive at the comet in mid-2014, hovering about one kilometer above the nucleus. It will search for a suitable site to release a lander that will touch down with less than one meter per second. Orbiter and lander will collect and sent data to Earth during 18 months, covering the entire rendezvous of the comet with the Sun. It will be another milestone in deep space missions, preparing maybe for a new encounter with Halley's Comet in 2062.